Hi, this is Juan from JuanTutors.com. Welcome to my totally free office hours. Uh, today we're working on the August 2016 New York Geometry Common Core Regions problem number 30. If you want to access these exams anywhere in the world, go to nysedregions.com. Uh, click on the appropriate tabs. So here's the problem. A circle has a center at 1, negative 2, and radius of 4. Does the point 3.4 comma 1.2 lie on the circle? Justify your answer. Pause the video. Try it on your own. Don't definitely don't jip yourself by by just seeing what we do and and saying oh oh I get it or or just copy. It's not worth it. Uh, you really won't get much out of it. So here's here's our solution though. Uh, and if you got the same answer as we do, definitely hit the like button. Let us know that you got the same answer as we did. So uh, first off, I draw a diagram for every single geometry problem. So here's me drawing a diagram. And this cir circle has a center at 1, negative 2. So at 1 and negative 2, that's the center. And a radius of 4. So it goes up 4, over 4, down 4 and over four okay so that is my circle that is an approximation for the circle okay and now this point 3.4 comma 1.2 there's two there's three there's four uh hold on there's two there's three somewhere around here is four and then there's five okay uh, let's see. So we need to know if this point is uh, on the circle. So 3.4 comma 1.2 somewhere uh, is somewhere. Let's draw this on in, in red just so that we can establish that it, it's somewhere here. It's plausibly in the same ballpark. It's I mean, it's near the where the circle should be. And so we got to justify our answer. Now, how do we possibly do that? Um, well, there is the distance formula, but that, and that that's how we're gonna do this problem. But that we, that's kind of my my point is that that if you don't don't realize the distance formula, you know, you definitely want to do whatever you can do to get some some geometric intuition on this problem. So this center is um, the point one negative two. 1, negative 2, and this other point is at the point uh, 1, uh, I'm sorry, 3.4 comma 1.2, 3.4 comma 1.2, okay? So here's the, the, the uh, thing that you kind of need to know that will help you get this answer right. It's a circle, right? This thing is a circle. What do the points on a circle have in common? What do they have in common? Well, they're all a distance 4. From the center right that's what the radius is it's literally the distance from the center to any of the points so let's use the distance formula to check if that point is a distance 4 from the center 1 negative 2 so the distance formula is equal to is equal to the square root uh, so of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared so I'm gonna call uh, the center, the first point, x1, y1, and I'm going to call the the other this other point the second point, so x2, y2. So now I know what numbers to plug in. I have four numbers and four numbers fifth spaces here. I know what to plug in. So let's do that. Equals the square root, and I should get a distance four if the point is on the circle and a distance not for if the point is not on the circle. Not only will it tell me if the point is not on the circle, it will tell me if it's inside the circle or outside the circle or on the circle. So sometimes they can ask you if the, uh, one of those two uh, one of those questions is the point interior to the circle, on the circle or exterior to the circle. So let's see. X2 is 3.4 minus uh, X1 is 1 squared plus uh, Y2 is 1.2 minus y1 is negative 2. Yes, you do need both per, uh, both negative signs. And they will always, 100% of the time, give you a point uh, with one positive coordinate and one negative coordinate. They love doing that. They, they in fact, it's, it's predictable at this point. They do it every time. So uh, square root 
3.4 minus 1 is 2.4 squared plus 1.2 minus negative 2 is 3.2. If you completely forget how to take, how to subtract negative numbers, use the calculator. So 1.2 minus a negative 2 is 3.2, right? So now let's square these numbers. 2.4 uh, squared is, uh, sh should be 576, and it is. So 576, 5.76, and then plus uh, 32, 3.2 squared should be 10.24, 10.24, good. And then I'm going to add these numbers, 5.76. Again, I am sorry, I'm recording all these videos uh, in a series. And uh, I have a fly in the room that will not go away, and I have to record. Uh, square root of 16 is 4. So the distance is 4. So the conclusion is that uh, this point is uh, the point uh, 3.4 comma 1.2 is on the circle. Done. Done. Uh, that that that's two points. If you were just looking for the answer, then definitely hit the next button. You're done. Uh, go to problem 31. But we did create a problem uh, for you guys, for you awesome students who really want to get ahead and need an extra practice problem. Uh, here is the problem. Um, two. Yeah, uh, we want to choose two positive integers. Though, now this is a little bit of a crazy pr uh, problem. We want to choose two positive integers, m and n, such that m is greater than n. Okay. Uh, then let a equals m squared minus n squared and b equals 2mn and let c equals m squared plus n squared and calculate the value of a, b, and c. And then show that there exists a right triangle a, b, c with legs of length a and b and hypotenuse c. Woo! That is a crazy problem. Well, let's just obey though. Choose two positive integers m and n such that m is greater than n. Well, m is greater than n. Uh, my favorite number is 9. And my, uh, um, I know, f well, 4 is less than n. How about 4? Uh, you know, if I had thought about this beforehand, let's say I'm a, as a student, maybe it would have been wise to choose smaller numbers, or maybe it would have been wise to choose more round numbers. Uh, but really, anything that you're comfortable choosing is okay. Uh, here I chose perfect squares, and I don't know if that's going to affect the problem at all, but that's what came to me, so that's what I did. So let's see, a is equal to m squared minus n squared, so let's see, 9 squared minus 4 squared is equal to 81 minus 16, uh, 71, 65, okay, uh, and you should definitely use your calculator to verify that. b squared is 2mn, so 2 times 9 times 4. 2 times 9 is 18, times 4 is 72. Use the calculator again to verify that. And n squared plus n squared is 9 squared plus 13, uh, plus 13, plus 4 squared is equal to 81 plus 16. 81 plus 10, 91 plus 6 is 7, uh, 97. Okay, there we go. And that's the, the numbers, A, B, and C. Okay, now show that there exists a right triangle ABC with legs of length A, B, and B, and hypotenuse C. Wow. Well, let's obey. Definitely pause the video. Think about what that means for a moment. Uh, so now, what does it mean, though? It, it's a uh, right triangle. Okay, there's my right triangle. With legs of length A and B, A, B, and hypotenuse C. So I'm going to call this side, this angle C. We'll call this angle A, this angle B. Okay, so A is 65. Okay, B is, is 72. And then C is equal to 97. So it seems like these numbers are so far out there. Well, how do I show that these, these that there exists such a right triangle? I can't just draw it and say, hey, it's a right triangle. But I, I got to verify it. How do I verify it? Well, we have a convenient theorem called the Pythagorean Theorem that should verify it. Theorem. PT, Pythagorean Theorem. Okay, so it says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's plug them in. Let's find out if this is true. 
uh, 65, and this, and the thing is that the Pythagorean theorem is an if and only if statement. If the triangle is a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm sorry, it went right triangle with a and b as legs and c as hypotenuse, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Simultaneously, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle with hypotenuse c. So 65 squared plus 72 squared equals, with a question mark, 97 squared. Now, for this, uh, I am going to use a calculator. I do know my perfect squares from 1 to 100, but 65 squared uh, is to 4225 plus 72 squared. Try to get it on your own. Let's see. Uh, 5184. I, know, I knew that because 490 plus 140 plus 140 plus 4. Uh, I'm sorry, 490 plus 14 plus 14 plus 4. I'm sorry, 490 plus... <sighs> edit. Edit. Edit right after the 5184. Okay. I knew that because uh, four, four, 7 squared is 49, so 70 squared is 49, 100. My trick is that 490 plus 14 plus 14 is 518, and then I I put at the end, I add a, a zero, I put a zero at the end, and then I add two squared is four, and it just works. Similar, well, in the case of 97 squared, 97 squared, 97 times 97, I could do, um, I could do 100 squared, which is 10,000, okay? And then I subtract, 200 twice and then I add 9 uh, and that's 9404 uh, and let's see if this is true with a question mark 4225 plus 5184 is that 9409 so oh typo here I made a typo here that's 9409 as you could see in this little area and I, I just typed it wrong so uh, I already wrote it wrong so 94 09 equals 9409 so this is the, it so uh, therefore there exists does exist a right triangle with uh, sides of length uh, 65 and 72 and Hypotenuse 97. Okay, an interesting fact about the Pythagorean theorem uh, and Pythagorean triples in general, there's an infinite number of Pythagorean triples. And another interesting fact is that not only are there an infinite number of them, but they can all be generated. I actually chose a simplified version of the theorem, which uh, limits the number of Pythagorean triples that I can generate. Uh, but but uh, this method will always work. There are many ways of generating Pythagorean triples. I've seen some very cool methods. Uh, well, the one formula has assumes that M and N have the same parity, meaning they're both odd or both even. And then I divide. The, this gets divided by two, and this uh, and this is would just be M N, and then this gets divided by a two. Um, and that works, and that generates all of them. I've seen, for those who are doing Algebra 2 trig, I've seen some really cool ones. Like if you just pick any imaginary number uh, or any complex number, 5, minus, uh, five plus 8i, and you square it, that generates a Pythagorean triple. Uh, so many cool tricks. And notice that the gener this generates Pythagorean triples using uh, actually this same exact formula. Uh, which is uh, how I generated my my problem for for appropriate and at a level that's appropriate for geometry. Okay, so that is the uh, practice that we did for problem 30. Uh, listen, uh, this was meant to be an extra hard problem, but it was a, just meant to be an interesting problem, something that can come up in geometry at a different level. They can definitely say, hey. To, uh, a right a triangle has sides of length 65, 70, or 72, and 97. Is this triangle the right triangle? Justify your answer. Uh, they can say things like, hey, uh, A equals 
uh, or m equals 9 and n equals 4, find the value of a, b, and c, and then they could say triangle a, b, c has two, uh, three sides of length 65, 72, and 97, and then is this triangle a right triangle? That would be a four-point problem, uh, but it's not unreasonable for them to, to ask something along those lines. Um, so hopefully, listen, I, it takes a lot of work. And, and the whole point of the giving this problem was to give you something interesting that's kind of out of left field so that you can expect things out of left field when, 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 they, when they create these problems for you on the, on the regions. Um, thanks for watching. Listen, I know you can do it. Uh, keep working at it. And uh, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for that next video starting right now.